All right, we're, we're going to move along to our, our individual rider enthusiast, uh, Michael Kellett. He uh, owns his own photography um, studio here, and, um, and Brian, he's been riding for 14 years. He's a member of the Iron Butt Association, uh, an international organization dedicated to safe long-distance motorcycle riding. Michael rides a, a BMW R1200. Yes. Hey, welcome, everybody. Like Patty said, my name is Michael Kellett. I am nothing more than what you'd call a motorcycle enthusiast is what they listed me as, as on the uh, uh, agenda. And I guess what makes me a motorcycle enthusiast is I've, I ride about 15,000 miles a year, a year, and that's non-commuting. That is strictly recreational riding. So um, I've clocked a few miles, and I've learned over the years to be a big proponent of motorcycle safety. And I guess uh, I, I dressed in black today to, to illustrate a little point. How many of you can see me? Can you see me now? Huh? Okay. All right. What I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about is motor motorcycle conspicuity. And no, you don't have to pronounce it or say it. You just have to learn what it is. Okay? Now, what it is, this is a definition that I looked up. The, it's the property of being clearly discernible or the state or quality of being clear or bright. Okay? As James said in his presentation, the number one excuse that people give when they get in a motorcycle, an accident with a motorcycle is, I didn't see him, right? Everybody's heard that. Car pulls out in front of you, you stop at the light, you give them the finger, oh, I didn't see you. Okay, well, that's, that's the excuse, okay? And I looked up, uh, with Patty's help, came up with a little bit of information on some studies that were done um, that shows that the, uh, the, that is the universal excuse and the universal reason uh, given for most motorcycle accidents is that low motorcycle conspicuity or the inability of the motorcyclist to be seen by other motorists is an important factor associated with the risk of crashes, okay? Um, results from several factors. Like James said, small size of the motorcycle, irregular shape of the motorcycle, uh, low luminance or contrast, meaning dark things in dark places, okay? Blending in with the background. You know, you're on a twisty road, you get around a curve, or you get in the shadows of the trees at the, in the morning or the afternoon where those long shadows are casting across the road, okay? And the ability to travel in places that cars can't. So when you get in the lane, in a traffic lane, you can sneak in and out of little tight spaces where cars can't, Thing is, cars aren't expecting things to come out of those little tight spaces. So we magically appear, and that's how we get clipped on left-hand turns and U-turns and things like that. Okay? And what I'd like to talk to you about are the measures you can take to reduce that risk of being involved with, with a collision because of your conspicuity. Okay? All right. Two big things we can do to address this issue issue of being seen. Equipment and gear. The equipment is what's on the motorcycle. The gear is what's on you. Okay. And this is an example I found. This is being really conspicuous. Okay. <laughs> now, I'll admit I'm pretty nerdy, so I kind of go towards that end. However, you don't have to go to the extreme. Okay. There are ways to get the, meet a common ground there. Okay, first thing I'll talk about is the equipment, the actual motorcycle itself, okay, and that, the, the way you can make your motorcycle more conspicuous is through lighting, uh, adding reflectors or reflective equipment to it, or more importantly, leaving the ones on that came from the factory. Now, I know they're not cool, it's kind of like getting a bicycle and putting playing cards in the spoke, that's pretty dorky, but... They put that equipment on there from the factory for a reason, okay? And finally, paint color. How many people in here that ride, ride a black motorcycle? Hey, not that many, okay. Just, it, 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 I know it's a style choice, it's a, it's a personal preference, but that's one of those things that really plays into it. The darker you are, the harder you are to see, even in the daytime, 
Okay. Now I did a little research because one of the arguments I've gotten about this is, yeah, but aren't that, isn't that illegal? Okay. So I looked up some things in the motor vehicle code to kind of clarify some ideas. Okay. Um, I won't read you all this boring stuff, but basically you can read that up there on the screen. Hopefully if you got good eyes, um, basically the mo okay. You want me to read? I'll give you the highlights. Motor vehicle so code says you are obligated to having a headlight on a motorcycle. Okay. Um, tells you, you know, how, how far it has to be seen, basically an idea of how bright it has to be. However, okay. There's some other thing. This is the minimum requirement. Okay, if if a vehicle is required to have a headlight, meaning it's a road going vehicle. Okay, you can you got to have a headlight and you got to have tail lights and a brake light minimum requirement. Okay, however, there's things that are permitted in the motor vehicle code that you may not be aware of spot lamps. Okay, this is all in addition to the basics of your headlight and your your tail light and your brake lights. Okay, minimum equipment. Okay, spot lamps. You can have no more than two spot, spot lamps, okay? Doesn't say you can't have no more than two, okay? And a spot lamp shall be aimed so that no part of the high-intensity high portion of the beam strikes windshields, window mirrors, or occupants in another vehicle. In other words, you don't want to aim them up in people's faces and piss them off, okay? That creates negative attitudes toward motorcycles. So having those big, bright spots, headlights that shine in everybody's eyes and make them flash their brights at you when you're going down the road. That's not exactly the idea. However, it is permissible to have those additional lights. You can also have fog lights. Okay. You can not two or no more than two fog lights. Okay. They got to be mounted 12 to 30 inches off the ground. Okay. And again, aimed so that they're not up in people's eyes. Okay. And they can't be seen more than 25 feet in front of the motorcycle, basically. Okay. And by the way, nothing in here says that fog lights have to be amber. Okay. Just specifies the intensity and the placement. Okay. Auxiliary passing lights. Okay. So remember, all of this doesn't say you can have one or the other. This is this, the code says you can have all of this. Okay. And two, no more than two auxiliary passing lamps, again, mounted 24 to 42 inches from the ground. And again, m these may be used with headlamps. And in the section, it specifies, in other words, you can't run passing lamps and a bright headlight at the same time. They have to be go on and off with your headlight. And if you have these installed by a dealership, the default is that they are tied into the relay to your high beam headlights so that when you go on high, that the, it switches them off. Okay. Okay. Auxiliary driving lights. Again, no more than two, 16 to 42 inches off the ground. And again, may be used with headlamps as specified. Okay. Now, if you've added this up, that's about eight lights, okay? Believe it or not, I got all of them on my bike, okay? Like I said, I'm a geek, but I do it, okay? All right, and this is a big one. The federal law says that headlight modulators are legal. Now, this varies state by state, can be a city ordinance that impacts that, so it's something you do want to investigate before you go do it, but... Does everybody know what a modulator is? The thing that makes the headlight kind of look like it's going bright, low, bright, low, bright, low. Okay. Again, all of these things are to generate visibility. Okay. Um, I'm not pimping products today, but I'm just going to give you some uh, an examples of things because I don't work for anybody and all of that, just to clarify that. Um, a couple of things that uh, I'm familiar with that my riding cronies and I believe in are moto lights. And if you haven't seen these things, I put the URL for the website on there so you can check it out. Moto lights are one brand. Okay. The other one is Clearwater lights. And these are available at most dealerships as well as order them direct off of the internet. But like you see in the picture, okay, what these lights are for mounting down on your forks. 
They can either clamp around the fork tubes or they can mount to the brake disc caliper bolts. The, the, but the idea is if you've seen a freight train in recent years, you guys from TTI know this kind of stuff. What have they added to the front of trains? They call them ditch lights, okay? And they're down low on the corners of the train. Instead of just that big headlight that was always up there in the front, they've got a triangle of light now on the front of that train. That wasn't so the train can see where it's going, okay? Because it pretty much goes in one direction, right? That is visibility. That triangle of light was, was created to con create that conspicuity because everybody that pulls out in front of a train says, oh, I didn't see it coming. Okay, this, this is just a closer up picture of one of the little clear lot water lights. I'm not talking about mounting these big giant PIA four wheel drive off road light things like this, okay? Although people do that, okay? But these are little bitty lights. I mean, these things are like an inch and a half or two inches in diameter at the most usually. And they're, when they're on the bike, they're not big, ugly, menacing things, okay? They blend into the profile of the bike. And the clear waters now are LEDs, so you basically never have to change bulbs in them. They last forever, and theirs are actually dimmable. So that if you're driving in foggy conditions and you want a big uh, splashback of light, there's a little dimmer on the handlebar. When they install them, you can roll that intensity down, and then when you get out on the open road or whatever, you can roll them back up. So pretty neat little design. That's a picture of them mounted on the front calipers there. So... Okay, uh, gear. This is what you do, okay? Helmet color choice, the, the gear you ride in, the stuff you wear on your body, high-vis vest and other kind of high-vis gear. Um, about helmet color choice. Helmet, <clears throat> helmet it, laws and riding with helmets is one of those things that's hotly debated, but I think if you're here, you probably believe in the idea that riding safely is paramount. So we're going to assume that riding in a helmet's not a bad thing for this crowd, but the helmet you choose can make a big difference on that visibility factor, okay? I personally wear a white helmet. I put some reflect, these are those little black 3M reflecty things that are, when headlights hit them, they glow silver, whatever. But basically that's just a, a solid white helmet because all the studies that have studied such things say that the most visible color that was available in a helmet was white. Well, now some of the manufacturers have gotten really good with it and they make high-vis helmets, okay? I will absolutely, I'll show you an example here in a little bit. You will see this thing way beyond you, you ever imagined, okay? Okay? And there's another part of it. When you're riding down the road and somebody's coming up from you behind and you turn your head to check a blind spot, what do you think that looks like? Yeah, it's a Martian, but it's also a turn signal. Okay? That, that becomes an arrow of the direction that you're looking at. Okay? And this, these things do make a difference. And I'm preaching to you, that can save your life. Okay? Now, you don't want to go out and buy a bunch of expensive, ride, all new riding gear, right? Okay. Well, these little vests, you can get these vests. I'll show you some of this stuff. But never mind the uh, logo, okay, on the back. <laughs> this one fell off a truck, I think. Um, okay. Yeah. But you can go down to Granger or, you know, I think even like if you're really cheap, you can go to like Harbor Freight and get these orange safety vests made for working on the side of the road. You slip this thing over a black leather jacket in the early morning or, the, or when you're riding home in traffic and you've just quadzillion drupled your, your visibility for next to nothing. Again, doesn't mean not going out and buy, buying all new riding gear. Okay, now for some some geeky facts that I kind of found. Again, thanks to Patty's help. Okay, there hasn't been a lot of study, as most of you know, about motorcycle accidents since the Hertz study, which is getting pretty old now, and hopefully we're on the verge of getting some new crash data. But in New Zealand, they did this study where they looked at the crash 
uh, statistics and they looked at why they happened is, and used the conspicuity of the motorcycle as a factor in why the accident happened. And they found that you had a 37% chance, 37% less of a chance of getting into an accident if, you were, if you're wearing some kind of high visibility clothing and 24% less of a chance of getting in an accident if you wear a white helmet instead of a black one. Okay, and this is not just roadside study survey. This is actual, these were considered serious or fatal accidents. Okay, so it really does make a difference. Okay, now an interesting thing they found in that study is that it wasn't the, f the color of the front of the motorcycle or the front of the gear that had the major impact. It was what was on the back. Okay, um, so it, I, I'm assuming, because the study didn't say this, but rear-end collisions probably having a lot to do with that. I would I guess that when you're more visible from the back, you're less likely to, likely to get run over. Okay? All right. Again, blah, blah, big, tiny, tiny type. Okay. Um, there was a study done in Texas that studied 10,000 collisions, okay, motorcycle collisions, and... The study did show that there was a, a correlation between conspicuity of the motorcycle rider and the involvement in an accident. And that study, that Texas study, also showed that there were fewer collisions when a motorcycle driver was wearing brightly colored clothing. So then, based on that, they did a test where they basically put motorcycle riders in high-vis gear and drove them through traffic and watched people's reactions mainly at left-hand turns because that's where the majority of the accidents were happening. And in that study, they found that the drivers of cars would actually yield the right away more to motorcycles and the following distances were increased. Okay, so if you're tired of getting tailgated or run up on being visible is telling that driver of that car, hey, I want to be seen and I want to be given the same berth as a guy in another car, okay? So this study, again, showed that conspicuity was improved during daylight hours by wearing fluorescent clothing, eh, like that, and riding with your headlights on. I think all, pretty much every motorcycle on the road now has a, motor, a headlight that burns all the time, but we're talking about increasing that visibility even more with this auxiliary lighting. Okay, high-vis gear, again, some of the examples I brought to show you up here. Not all of this stuff has to be super dorky, okay? It's like James said, you don't have to wear that stuff that burns you up either. Um, these, some of these jackets are made out of mesh, and these are actually cooler in the summertime than wearing a T-shirt, okay? I know you may not believe that, but when you block that sun off your skin and you have that airflow throwing, going through there, it's actually a lot more comfortable to be wearing this. And you think about how much more, more visible that is than a black T-shirt. Okay. Um, let's see. Ladies, very stylish. Okay. Yeah. That one on the, that one, they call this thing the toxic, that orange and yellow. And I really believe that, but I saw one of these things in person, and it was like made you want to put sunglasses on to just standing there looking at it in the store. So it really is obnoxious. Okay. This orange, I know that TxDOT and TTI have probably studied this stuff a lot on what the most visible color is, but you got to say that traffic cone orange right there, on either that, even compared to this yellow, I thought the yellow was pretty good, and I'll show you the picture until I rode behind this thing. And it's, uh, it's pretty annoying after all. <laughs> so if you ride with people you don't really like all the time, it's kind of a good thing. Um, this is a, an example of some of these relatively inexpensive vests that you can get, um, and I mean like $12, $14 at the most for most of these things that have the actual 3M scotch light on them. Um, this one, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm wearing is made by Olympia. I think that um, there's, th again, two or three brands of these on the market now. It's actually a pretty useful thing. This is mesh in the front so the air goes through it, 
but it's also got lots of pockets for all your junk and, you know, cell phones and all that candy and all that kind of stuff. So it, it makes a nice garment to be worn over just a regular leather jacket if you go that way. And for our Harley riders that think all oh, this stuff is strictly for those geeks riding BMWs and stuff like that, Harley Davidson has actually caught up with the times. And they've come out with a full line uh, add-on of high-vis gear. If you didn't know this, I don't know if all the dealerships are carrying it, but they have jackets and vests, these backpacks, and I'll show you even helmets now that are in high-vis, mostly the orange color because it ties in with the Harley theme. But if you're going to buy something to stick with your brand and be cool, this stuff is definitely the better way to do it. On helmets, again, whether you want to wear a full face or a half shell, that's your personal choice. But a color choice can still mean the difference of staying alive. So a white helmet or a high-vis orange or yellow helmet like some of these, like I showed you, definitely the better choice if you want to be seen and stick out in a crowd. Okay. Um, other equipment, gloves. This is an interesting thing I ran across. You've probably seen these things. These are mechanics gloves, like they sell at Napa and stuff. Okay, Mechanics actually makes a line of these that are high-vis yellow and red. And the one on the right is, it's got lots of little rubber, gnarly, bumply things on it for protecting your knuckles, but the palms are bright red. And the color doesn't show up as well, but the back is, is truly high-vis, and it's got scotch light reflective on it, and the palms are almost day-glow red. If you're a hand signaler, and, and you know, I use hand signals in traffic in addition to my turn signals, you stick that hand out there with that bright red and yellow glove, again, it's like waving a big traffic flag out there. And it really is a heck of a lot more visible. And these things are like 25 bucks, a lot cheaper than most of the motorcycle branded stuff. And still, I think a good idea, a dish, cheap addition to your gear. Okay. I know these pictures are really small, but up here I thought they'd be on a big screen, sorry. Um, the top picture, the, I've tried to find two with ro about the same distance to the motorcycle riding in front. The top one is a rider wearing basically, uh, I think, a white jacket, okay? And then the bottom one is Mr. Baker wearing this thing, okay? And... If you're close enough to see it, that orange jacket sticks out considerably more than even the white does. White's good, better than black, but that orange high-vis is definitely makes a difference. And let's see, hopefully this will show up too. That's just, that's riding along behind that thing, and you'll see as you're going over the, the turns and the, through the, the different terrain in front. Now, that's pretty isolated terrain, obviously, but you can see that orange jacket really sticks out yeah yeah and you put this helmet on top of it yeah pretty hard to miss so and we believe in it and it's this is not just uh lip service standing up here i can tell you for a fact that myself and the the guy in this uh video right here wears this every single time he gets on the motorcycle it's not an occasional thing for traffic, what have you. Okay. Uh, that was actually, yeah, Big Ben. Yeah. All right. That's my presentation. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. I, I am a railroad engineer, and I do drive trains. And I did hit a lady on the crossing. And I asked her, I said, why? What happened? She said, I didn't see the train. I got, I got the triangle lights, I got yellow and red, and I'm sitting there saying, you know, what about the crossing sign and the blinking lights on it and the blinking lights, that, why did you go around the gate? Because I didn't see the train. Then I come back to the expectation. There's train tracks. Don't you expect a train to come along sometime? But, I mean, I go, then I go with Ron White. You can't fix to That's right. <laughs>